Hey, what's going on? Travis here, TravisSetzel.com, TrainAggressive.com, and uh, about to crank an awesome aggressive strength talk session here with my man, Sean Hatzel, who has some interesting uh, nutritional and training concepts in regards to getting lean and mean. And so, Sean, I wanted to first off thank you for being on this uh, call. Thanks for taking the time and, uh, you know, let me pick your brain a little bit, man. Pleasure to be on, man. I'm always passionate about talking shop. So awesome, dude. So yeah, it was about a year ago, I believe, when I first met you. I knew about you, and then I saw you at the uh, event that I was at in Miami, and I was like, "Yo, I got to go up and talk to this guy." So just talking a little bit of shop with you there, and uh, just digging into the, the nutritional concepts that you uh, that you you kind of created and put together. And then uh, we, we kind of got to talking uh, training, of course, as well. So I'm pretty excited to uh, kind of dig into your brain here and uh, talk, talk a little bit more about this stuff. So uh, we'll, we'll dig right in, man. So why don't we just start off for people that might not know who you are, um, kind of give your background story because you got a, you got a pretty interesting background story and how you got started with all this good stuff. So kind of dig yeah. into that. Uh I think I'm just like anybody else that's uh, in the industry as a fitness professional. Um, just my passion brought me to the industry. It started in 1998 with the Body for Life contest. I was a uh, first place runner up. So uh, that was kind of like my catalyst into the industry. And I discovered back then the, the principles, a lot of the foundation of the principles that I'll share today about carb cycling, high intensity strategies that I use. And, uh, so that was kind of my catalyst into the industry from that point. I became a personal trainer, ended up diving into the brick and mortar side of things, owned a couple of personal training studios for five years in Ann Arbor, Michigan. We did really well. We were a franchise and we were in the top 10 in the world for about three or four years in a row. My wife did own and I own those. And then so, uh, you know, through that journey, a couple of things happened where I was, I got a lot of exposure. I was uh, voted Club Solutions Magazine, most fit health and fitness pro back in 2008 and then uh, I sold my studios because I saw things changing both in the economy and with the industry. We did private affluent training to higher end clientele and as the economy changed and boot camps started growing, the franchise kind of became almost obsolete. So I saw an opportunity to reach a lot more people on the internet. Um, locally, you can only, you know, I mean, you can only reach 100 people or so. So yep. I took a dive and went into the internet world and I acquired the global license back in 2009 for a proprietary nutrition plan called Macro Patterning that was featured in a couple of New York Times best-selling books. And so now I have a global license for that. We've created a couple of products online uh, that became top 10 bestsellers here in the last nine months. And so we're helping tons of people with carb cycling and teaching them how to kind of eat all their favorite carbs and enjoy life a little bit while they can still burn stomach fat and stay lean. It is possible. Most people just don't know how to do it. Definitely, man, and that's that's the type of stuff that I want to kind of dig into more because I think people get the concept of carb cycling, you know, it's it's starting to come around a little bit more. But like you said, there is a strategic way to do it and get results. And you know, just on top of that, with you, one of the biggest things I respect about other coaches and trainers is people that you know actually walk the walk. And I mean, you walk around lean and mean year round, and it's um, you know obviously using the concepts that you preach. So uh, we're going to be digging into that more. But before we do that, why don't we kind of take a step back? And I always like to find this out about uh, people that I talk with, and it's the mission. I guess what drives you to do what you do um, in regards to training and all the you know different research that that you're doing day to day uh, to you know, obviously help people, but I guess what is, if you were to have a mission statement for what it is you do, what, what is it? You know, I mean, I, I think as a company, we kind of have one that we kind of sit, sit, sits here in the backgrounds, you know, we, we, our core values that we live by. And it basically is just always honor God and family first and always over deliver to people when we're serving others. And then, uh, you know, I think more than anything, it's, you know, serving others through our passion. I mean, I'm just like anybody else. What drives me is my passion for the industry and the human body. I think more than anything, if we go deeper, it's core desires. Um, my battle started with my daughter who 
I didn't get to see for like the first three years of her life. So I always, my motto is to always teach people to find their bigger reason why something deeper than just, you know, walking around being fit. Um, it's about a lifestyle that serves as a catalyst to improve every other area of your life. And I think that's really what defines my mission is to reach as many people with that message as I can, that if you use fitness and healthy eating as an anchor in a lifestyle, it can serve every other area in a positive way, whether that's being a dad, whether that's being a businessman, whether that's your spirituality, whatever it is. So I think that would define it best. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there because, you know, that's one of the main messages messages that I push too is, you know, when athletes or just people come into my gym and they're working out and and it's, you know, the effort that they put into their training sessions, you know, going, pushing their bodies and their minds to a certain level, it's just going to cross over and, and into every other part of their life. And I think a big uh, part of that message that you just shared is that, that reason why, you know, um, when it comes to this nutritional stuff and, you know, training and whatnot, when it comes down to it, you know, you got to have that reason why you got to have that big core desire, like you mentioned which is going to push you to, you know, the next level. But of course throwing the right type of information on top of that is going to, you know, help get you there quicker. So awesome yes. stuff, man. So why don't we kind of dig into I guess what carb cycling is um in case, you know, people watching this don't have a clue what it is and uh, we'll kind of dig in more with that. Well, basically carb cycling is just using carbohydrates as the primary mac- macronutrient to take in and out of your diet at precise times to do a couple things. Number one, to keep your metabolism healthy. Um, you can do this through both the hormonal aspect as well. I mean, carbs are the one, one and only macronutrient that the minute they hit your mouth, they're instantly available for energy. So they have to be managed differently than other macronutrients. And when we can manipulate carbs by cycling them in a different, in a specific manner, depending on, I mean, there's several different cycles that we could talk about. What ends up happening is, number one, you can force your body to burn more fat without suppressing hormones. Most people that just cut out carbs and try to go low carb for a lengthy, lengthy period of time, they end up damaging their metabolism mm-hmm. and suppressing a lot of the hormones that can control fat loss, like leptin, conversion from T4 to T3, which is your thyroid, the master gland, and the metabolism. And then also insulin sensitivity. Um, So by managing and cycling carbs, by taking them out on specific days and adding them back in on specific days, sometimes timing them properly can make a big difference as well, we can enjoy our favorite foods, manage our hormones, and still burn fat. Very cool. I mean, it's a simple concept, really. And uh, when you look at it, I think... I'll just back up here a little bit because when people are trying to lose weight, so for example, people that are trying to lose 30 plus pounds, you know, they just got to focus in on just better eating in general, you know, eat lean and clean, cut out the, you know, the, the, the sugars, the processed carbs, the bad stuff, and you, you'll, you'll lose weight rather easy, throwing that on top of obviously training and being more active, but What I get the questions with a lot is for the guys and the girls that get down to that point. Say they lose the 20 pounds, the 30 pounds, and they it seems like they hit a wall. And so with this carb cycling, it seems like this is one of the best methods out there to help people push through that wall. Wouldn't you agree? There's no question about it, and you hit the nail on the head. There's, I mean, we could give we could sit here and talk about a dozen different ways to lose weight. Yeah, and they all and they're all and they're all going to work, right? There's no doubt about that. There's a hundred different ways to skin the weight loss cap. But when you get leaner, it becomes tougher. The fat becomes more stubborn and we have to get more strategic. And we, and actually, that's one of the things that I am known for is I am a stubborn fat expert. So I teach people when they get down to that last 10, 15, even 20 pounds of stubborn fat after they've lost a bunch, now it becomes trickier and we got to start dealing with hormones a little bit better. Also, we got to teach you how to maintain this. So once you do get it off, how can you maintain this for the long haul? And I think that's where carb cycling really comes in as a lifestyle aspect as well, which is huge. Most problems are, or most diets and exercise programs address rapid fat loss, but what happens after that? Most people gain the weight back because they start eating like they used to 
Well, once you understand carb cycling, you can still enjoy a lot of your favorite foods. You just got to be smart about it. Definitely. So let's kind of look at um, what a basic weekly setup might look like with this. Uh, so if we we're training three, four days, let's say we're training on Monday, Tuesdays, Thursday, Fridays, and we're down to that certain level where we're starting to implement in this this carb uh, this type of carb cycling. What would a weekly uh, layout look like for that? Well, you could customize it according to your training days if you wanted to. Um, one of the easiest uh, patterns to follow, that's why we call it macro patterning, is strictly using a, a carb up or sometimes referred to as a baseline day where we, beat the, we meet the body's perceived caloric needs and we add in carbohydrates and we do this strategically on days where you train with weights or high intensity body weight training when we're doing resistance training of some kind. And then we would alternate that with what we call a carb down or a more extreme version of what we call a deplete day. And that's where we're going to limit the impact carbohydrates like starches and fruits. And on those days, if the goal is fat loss, we would go ahead and incorporate a strategic high intensity cardio workout that would release adrenaline and more fat-burning hormones to take advantage of the lower carb intake on those days. So on the days that you're increasing carb intake would be the high-intensity weight training or resistance training days. These are the days where you're going to spike insulin in a healthy manner, and that's going to go ahead and keep leptin happy as well, keep the thyroid more active, so that on the days where you aren't doing resistance training and you're incorporating some type of high-intensity cardio workout where you're doing maybe a short, hard burst, like a Tabata protocol or something maybe around 30 seconds where you're going to release adrenaline. And when you're carving down or eliminating those starches and fruits on those days, now you're going to burn more fat. So you have a good balance there of keeping your body happy where you don't lose muscle on these weight training days and you add in carbs. Hormones are happy and it sets the body up perfectly on the deplete days to burn more fat. Very cool. And again, simple stuff here. So Looking at these days, so you got your higher carb days and then your depletion days. Now, on higher carb days, is it is there a certain amount of carbs that you're looking to take in, or is there like a threshold, like 100 grams, or I guess how do you break well, that down? Obviously, there's going to be a several different ways that we can handle this, depending on the weight of the person, the body fat level of yeah. the person, the training protocol of the person. So there's a lot of variables that come into play, but in general, on a carb up day. You know, if you're somebody who's trying to burn fat, and that's the goal is fat loss, you're not really concerned about gaining muscle, just maintaining, sure. then the post-workout window, if you're over 200 pounds, I would recommend a couple fist-sized servings of a starch okay. and uh, you know a piece of fruit or two in the post-workout window with some protein. Now, with that being said, that can open up a whole other can of metabolic worms when it comes to carb intake because if you're a Travis... Stetzel of the world where you're a high intensity exerciser, it's actually more desirable in that post workout window to have white carbs than it would be to have lower glycemic yep. carbs because it's the pure glucose molecules yep. that an anaerobic exerciser like yourself and me are going to respond to to really spike insulin, to really get the body responding better, to increase the testosterone to estrogen ratio. And actually, even things like white rice can be more beneficial yeah. in those post, post because. Brown rice has this, these lectins and this gluten component that yeah. people have to deal with. So for a high intensity exerciser like us, white rice is actually more desirable. And I would recommend a couple cups of that and then maybe a piece of fruit or two. What happens then is that's not too many carbs where you're going to get any fat gain, yeah. but it's enough to keep the hormones happy and, and make sure you don't lose muscle and keep the metabolism going so that on the other days you're going to burn a, burn a belly fat a lot more aggressively. Interesting. I think a very important point that you make is not all carbs are created equal and not, not all carbs are the same. So you got your white rice, brown rice, there's a major difference there like you mentioned. Um, just like you're going to get a different uh, impact on you know what happens metabolically, hormonally on your body when you eat white rice versus let's say uh, you know pasta or something like that. You know, People are typically – that's that's a mistake people typically make is they think all carbs are created equal if they're starchy carbs where that's not the case. And I mean we can dig Definitely. into these details deep, but I, I think the general concept right there is pretty good. Um, so going on the other side of the fence here with our depletion days, what are just some 
regular principles for that? What are you looking for? Are, are you up in your fat intake on that? Um, saying, There's three guidelines that you yep. have to stick to. Three main guidelines. And this is a great way to, I mean, the four cycle solution, my four cycle solution program actually takes you through four cycles sure. um, that we can kind of talk about a little bit. In, in the first cycle, we do a seven day diet where we deplete you very aggressively because most people's bodies are dependent on burning sugars and carbohydrates yep. as fuel. They're sugar burners, right? Yep. So we have to make them fat adapted. So it's a tough week, but in that week, a female who is overweight will typically lose 8 to 15 pounds in that week. Yep. Some of it being water, but a lot of it being fat. And the reason why is because we're doing three basic things on these deplete days. We're doubling your water intake or at least making sure that your water intake is very aggressive. We're upping friendly fats and green vegetables aggressively because we want to replace the carbohydrates that are missing and we want to replace them with calories that can keep us full and provide the nutrients that we need because we're cutting out the carbs. Yep. And then, of course, protein intake has to be elevated a little bit as well. And that's going to be dependent on activity level. I mean, during a deplete day, it's very easy uh, to deplete for a day. But when we're doing an aggressive like seven-day diet cycle like we do in cycle one of the four-cycle solution, we're actually accomplishing a totally different goal. We're not just burning fat for the day. Yeah. We're shutting off the body's dependence on sugars, turning on the body's ability to burn fat for the long haul. So that yep. first week really sets up their metabolism to be a long-term fat burner. But basically, you're cutting out all starches and fruits on that day, and you're going to keep your impact carbs from residual carbs that you're eating other foods probably under 25 grams. And in general, as a lifestyle, I tell people under 50 grams on those days. And you probably do that about three days of the week as a lifestyle approach. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I like that concept because if you look at how the world works in general, it's all, you know, give and take. It's all in moderation. And, uh, you know, that's the exact same way this, this uh, protocol works. And like you mentioned, you can do the it, – it's not some sort of – and once you get into this carb cycle, it's not some sort of thing that is only going to work for 21 days or, you know, a month or something like that. If you apply the principles correctly, it's something that you can easily use for a lifetime because obviously you're living proof of that, um, you know, walking around. Yeah, it does work. And, all you and it's fun so. too because then you can, you can plan out, you can plan out your cheats mm -hmm. and you can plan out your carb loads yep. or what we call refeeds. Yep. And it makes it more fun that way. You just have to be, like I said, you just have to be smart about it, right? So it's just like anything. I mean, it's low-carb diets. To say they don't work is can be a double-edged sword because yeah. they do work, but it's a temporary quick fix, yeah. right? So Definitely. we have to have a balance, like you said. Definitely. Um, with you mentioning cheats, it's it's always funny. Like I'll run into some clients out, out of town or like in town, and my wife will, wife and I will be out. And typically we have our cheats like on Friday night or you know Saturday night and – I'll have a three course meal and double double uh, serving of dessert, you know, and it's always funny because people automatically think if you're a lot of people think this is when you're lean, they think that you're you're almost a robot and you never touch sugar, you never t touch processed carbs and stuff like that where that's not the truth and and uh, you know it comes down to just applying these these types of different concepts, uh, the carb cycling, so it really works well so I guess uh, let's kind of switch gears here and go over to the training side of things because obviously nutrition is, you know, a major component, you know, to getting lean. But uh, how about uh, your training? So what's a typical week of uh, training look like for you, man? Well, it just depends on the goal. I mean, obviously, I'm like anybody else. I think the best program to follow is one that you can stick to and one that works, right? So we're all going to end up switching programs. Yep. And I think we need to cycle different programs. The way I've aligned – my training with uh, I line I line my training with my nutrition. And I think everybody should, should should just like if we're sitting here talking about a sedentary person, we yep. probably wouldn't be talking about eating potatoes and white rice, yep. right? Because they they just need to eat more like a caveman. They're sedentary. Yep. So training is the same way. My training I train more like a bodybuilder personally. Um, it's just kind of what I grew up in and kind of my style. I'm a big believer in what you do and I'm a big believer in even the body weight training. I just think you need to do what works for you based yep. on your environment. I like using dumbbells because I think it builds core strength. It's just like working with kettlebells. It's the same dang thing. If you're, if you're working with dumbbells and a bench, that's my favorite thing to do, and that's all I would need to be happy as far as my weight training goes. And I, right. I train aggressively with weights three or four days of the week, and I recommend the same thing 
with carb cycling. I mean, I think you need to align your training with your nutrition so that on days that you're training with weights, those are the days you know that you can get away with higher calorie, higher carb intake. And then I'm, I have a very unique protocol that I use year-round with interval training that I call interval sequencing, or it's actually like like I cycling carbs. I teach people how to cycle their intervals cool. to keep their body from responding. So this can be done in a cardio type of fashion, or it can be done in a body weight circuit type of fashion. Very cool. But basically, there's three different meta metabolic systems that I recommend you work with cardio or intervals, and you want to align these with carb down or deplete days. So lower carb days or deplete days. And what you need to do is, and again, this is for people like we talked about. If you're overweight and just losing weight, you don't need to really worry about this. It's when you get leaner, right? This is for stubborn fat. So uh, basically, there's three systems, Travis. One is the creatine phosphate mm -hmm. system, which I'm sure you're very familiar with. A short, hard burst of about 10 to 20 seconds like Tabata's. So we want to do one workout a week that consists of that at least, one or two workouts a week that consist of a series of these short, hard intervals or bursts that you're literally going almost 90% on that 10 to 20 seconds. They can go as high as 30 seconds, and you're doing at least 5 to 10 of those depending on your experience level. Sure. Now what that does is that releases more of the catecholamines or the adrenaline, and that actually helps create more blood flow to stubborn pockets of fat. So... These hormones will break apart the stubborn pockets of fat that are in like the lower back, the lower belly area for people who are starting to get lean and having a hard time getting rid of that fat. And if you feel that fat, like physically feel it with your hands, when you're done working out, you'll feel that it's chilly or cold. This type of intervals or burst will help create blood flow to that area to heat it up so that you can break that fat apart. And what I recommend doing is then if you're – have the time after those intervals are up, I recommend that you follow it up by doing some steady state cardio to help burn off these free fatty acids that have been released from the hormones. And it's a little strategic trick. I mean, there's a lot of talk out there that old school cardio is dead, old school cardio doesn't work. Well, I think it's a load of BS. I just think that the other stuff works a little bit better and it's a little more efficient. Yeah. To say old school cardio doesn't work is just, that's stupid because to be hundreds of thousands of bodybuilders have gotten lean and got on stage doing it back in the 70s and 80s and 90s, right? Yep. So it does work. It's just not efficient. So this is a strategic way to use steady state cardios after these intervals. That will help burn off free fatty acids that potentially, typically, can sometimes resettle and be stored again as fat, a process called reesterification that you really won't hear. It's more in the scientific world. So that's a little yeah. trick that you can use. So that's basically system number one. And system two is very similar to that. You're just extending the intervals longer. We call it the threshold system. So you're doing 45 to 60 second intervals. And you're doing that about once a week. And then the last system is the aerobic system where just once a week, I tell people just to do some low intensity work, whether it's low intensity body weight work, whether it's yoga, whether it's cardio, jogging, biking, whatever it is. You want to work the aerobic system, even though it's low intensity. And even though it might be boring, it primes your body to respond better when you're doing the high intensity stuff. And research actually shows that people who are aerobically conditioned burn more fat when they use high intensity principles like I just shared. Yeah, that's that's all great stuff. And I think uh, with that first principle that you shared, um, my wife, when she did her – well, when she's done her past shows, she gets down to that level. I mean she has like – three four more percent to go and that's one of the the methods that i put her on i'd have her do you know short all-out burst sprints you know whether that be on on the track or with on the rower and uh, then you just go when you finish that that short um, interval base workout you can throw that's when you can throw in your your steady state brisk walking or just light jogging or stuff like that and I think you broke it down there really, really well and um, made some good, important points there. So um, good stuff, man. And uh, uh, I remember talking to you in Miami. You had something uh, you were talking about that you do before training sessions. So say we're about to do a weight training session. There's something that you are talking about that you threw in to the warm-up or just right at the end of your warm-up to help jack up, you know, your uh, your fat-burning process. Yeah, yeah, kind of go into that a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, so 
Yeah, it's kind of like, it would be similar to a Tabata, but, you know, I mean, t- for those who aren't familiar with Tabata, it's just 20-second burst with a 10-second rest. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to do many Tabatas full all out and last much longer than four minutes. That's what it is. But what it is is I call it GH workout starters. So at the beginning of a workout, you want to use your big muscle groups, so obviously your legs. And you want to use an explosive movement if possible with high reps. And what will happen is this taxes all this, you know, taxes your nervous system really quickly. And so the sympathetic nervous system kicks up really high right out of the gate in your workout. So you want to do it strategically for just like three to five minutes. So you're not overdoing it and depleting glycogen. You're just taxing the nervous system really quickly and you're releasing the hormones like growth hormone as the fight or flight response kicks up. It's kind of like, you know, seeing a bear in the woods, right? You're going to take off running as fast as you can. Well, that's the same exact system you're activating at the beginning of the workout. So if you do it strategically for a really short amount of time, you don't have to worry about burning up muscle. You just release the hormones. So now you go do your regular workout, whatever that may be, and you have a hormonal advantage. And the heart rate is really elevated. So because you have an accelerated heart rate going into that workout, you're going to burn more fat and calories just by nature because the heart rate is going to stay naturally elevated higher throughout the entire workout after that. So usually like 20 to 30 reps of like uh, alternating some jump squats or some body weight squats for those who don't have as much experience with maybe some mountain climbers or, you know, some jumping lunges and just doing, you know, 25 to 30 reps, resting 30 to 45 seconds and doing it again and repeating that process for just a couple minutes. Yeah. And it works really well. Short, intense, and yeah, it works. So good stuff, man. All right. So yeah, there's uh, a big trend. There's a big trend on workout finishers, right? These are kind of like oh, workout yeah. starters. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so. It's all about getting that intensity up. And like you mentioned, uh, you know, I, I, with my training, I usually like to do like the power and explosive stuff first when you're fresh. And even doing just, you know, some jumps and things like that, like high box jumps or whatever, you know, it's going to help, you know, light your, your, your nervous system up and just get you, get you ready to go for training. So good stuff, man. All right. So let's switch it back to nutrition and we'll kind of end out here um, as we've already covered tons of awesome information. Now, something that's a huge, you know, buzzword in the, uh, in the fitness industry, so to speak. And it's something that I've jumped on, um, that I've been following now for close to two years and that's intermittent fasting. And, uh, I just wanted to get your side with it. Do you, uh, cause what I've been doing as I've been using sort of an intermittent fasting protocol, um, seven days a week. Um, I typically don't have my first meal until about one or two, but I've been implementing that in with, you know, carb, uh, carb cycling or carb rotation, and uh, I just wanted to get your view on that. Does it fit with this well, or is it something that you do personally as well? Or just what's your take on it? It, fits, it, it can fit in very well. Um, I'm personally a big believer in intermittent fasting like yourself. I've had a lot of success following the 16-8 protocol, Martin Burkhan's protocol. Um, but it's not for everybody. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, it's like we've talked about, I mean, the best meal cadence for anybody to follow is one that they can stick to and one that works for them. So, I mean, I, I, I'm a big believer in following the warrior. Later in the night. Um, but carb cycling works perfect with this because it's just the same philosophy. The only thing that you have to be aware of is that your meals are going to be larger because you're going to have a shorter feeding window. Yeah. So, you know, the... Uh, you just have to make sure that if you start to intermittent fast and you want to experiment with it, that you're keeping an eye on your macronutrients and realizing that, you know, instead of having five or six small meals, now you're going to have two or three bigger meals. And so I think it's just important that the same principles and philosophies apply and carry over that we just talked about to intermittent fasting. It's just a matter of figuring out, does it work for you? Yeah. It's not for everybody. My wife and I just did a 36-hour fast uh, on Monday of this week. And we do that about, well, probably about once every quarter we just do a 36-hour fast. We just know it's good for our body. Um, And one thing that's really good about intermittent fasting, even if you're not a believer in it and it doesn't work for you, I still think that doing an intermittent fast for 24 hours just once or twice a month even, just to get you emotionally detached from food is a good thing. It's a healthy thing. 
Um, but there's no question the hormone regulation that we talked about in this entire conversation, it just gets enhanced even greater through fasting and fed cycles. So anytime you start following these fasting, I mean, even for women, like even when my wife gets on a 12 hour fast and a 12 hour feeding cycle, she does much better. Yeah. It's a fasted and fed, it's still a fasting and fed cycle. It's just the windows are a little bit different. Yeah. And you know, something that I like about intermittent fasting is just, I'm busy. I'm super busy, especially in the mornings. You know, I, it used to be where when I wasn't as busy, I I could get up and, you know, take a, an hour or so to, you know, cook up a, a breakfast or whatever. If I needed to, I'd just have food prepared, but it's so much, it's a lot better, you know, not having to worry about that in the morning and, you know, I'm wide awake and alert anyways, Thomas, you know, man. so. Yeah, it's cumbersome. It's cumbersome having to, you know, I ate six meals a day, seven meals a day, sometimes mm-hmm. eight small meals a day for years on end, and it worked. But it becomes a pain in the butt after a while, and yeah. I agree with you 100%. I'm much more productive when I follow a intermittent fasting type of cycle. And, uh, you know, again, it's just figuring out what works for you and yeah. what you can stick to. I mean, it's more about healthy choices than it is fasting and fed cycles. Definitely. But I did put an intermittent fasting guide inside uh, both of my systems. So my four cycle fat loss and my 14 day rapid fat loss system both have uh, intermittent fasting sections. So for people who want to fast with carb cycling, they can make it work. Very cool. Awesome. Well, good stuff, man. Like I said, uh, we've already gone over a lot of uh, awesome stuff here. So why don't we go ahead and close out? Um, what kind of final key tips or takeaways, I guess, could you give to people before we close out here? I think one of the biggest ones that I always share with people outside of, you know, finding your big reason why that we talked about the core desire earlier is uh, just striving when it comes to health and fat loss or health and fitness or whatever your goal is, there's no such thing as being perfect. Strive to be consistent, not perfect. Um, I think human nature is either, hey, we're either all in or we're, we're either all out and it doesn't have to be that way. You know, you can have a couple bad days of your week and, and still be a, a lean, mean machine if you want to be. Uh, it's just a matter of sticking with it. Most people that goof up on their plan are, oh, I'm, I'm going to start next month, next week, or when so, everything's, all the stars are aligned perfectly in their world, and there is no such thing as perfectly aligned. There is no such thing as a perfect time. The time is now. Just do it daily and strive to be consistent, not perfect. Yeah, definitely. I, I like that message, and I think that's something that people get caught up in a lot especially when they start something new whether that be a training program or you know a new nutrition uh setup or whatever if they if they fail one time then they consider themselves done or they quit right there and i mean you can look at you know all the famous quotes out there like michael jordan who uh his quotes like i've failed thousands of times you know over and over that's why he's so successful and i think that that kind of goes over with exactly what you're saying there so that's a great message man so uh why don't we close out where can people find you if they want to get a hold of you uh where can they get more information and uh stuff like that man a couple places i recommend if you uh like video ton of great stuff stuff on my new youtube channel my company's called get lean and 12 so it's just get lean in and the number one two get lean and 12 so youtube.com forward slash get lean and 12 then um, four cycle fat loss is a my flagship carb cycling product that I'm sure that you'll be talking about to your people. And then um, the my blog is called gl12fitness.com. So gl12fitness.com, and that just has a, a lot of uh, free content and tons of articles, all that stuff. So I appreciate awesome. you having me on, man. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on and uh, putting out the time, man. I, I know we went through a lot of good stuff here. And uh, it's like I always say on these aggressive strength talks here, uh, you know, the knowledge is out there. We just unleashed a ton of useful stuff. I mean, you can take this stuff that we talked about right now, turn yourself into a lean and mean machine. I mean, just with this basic stuff. So you need to apply the knowledge that we went over, and that's how you'll get the results. So, Sean, thanks again, man. Everybody that's uh, watching in, keep living aggressive, getting strong. We are out.